everybody. Welcome to another installment, another epic edition of Omni Bros Live on a Monday. Yes, hell yeah, the favorite time of the week, right? Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Geo here filling in uh, before the uh, Omni Bros get here and all that fun stuff. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I see the chat is already lit up. That is awesome. God bless. Uh, all the regulars are here. Uh, it is a slow week, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make it. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, a Aria. Oh, I haven't seen you here in a while, sir. American Bully uh, Greco, uh, my favorite channel and episode show. That is awesome. So happy to have. Uh, you here, sir. NFL dude, thank you so much. James Abel, just as now when you're older, can he still sing the IST song? Well, you're going to be surprised because uh, Jess um, took the night off. He's on assignment. Uh, so uh, unfortunate, <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, Candace, thank you for joining. Gary, Mr. Awesome, Tolga, Adrian, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, oh, wow, so many messages. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh, Roberto, opening up again for the Stragglers, pretty much, uh, but it's all in good fun. Don't worry about it. Um, Nelson, what up, Geo? Four-hour show today. Um, maybe, if you guys want a four-hour stream. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Geo, one-man show, pretty much. Uh, Farhan, thank you so much. Nice to see you as well. Um yeah, this is an oldie but a goodie. I love this shirt. I've had this for quite some time. The movie may have sucked, but I love that design. NFL dude, Russell Crowe is better right Bill or King Thor? I th uh, King Thor, maybe. Maybe. Christopher, thank you so much uh, for joining. Hey, Gio and chat, thanks for the Junji Ito recommendations last week. Been loving what I have read so far. That is awesome. <clears throat> and I just put out a video on uh, my channel, A We Can Geek Them, where I talk about comics, manga, anime, all that fun stuff. And I did one on uh, Venus in the Blind Spot. So that was exciting. Mr. Awesome, Aquaman and Human Show tonight. You know what? You know it, sir. That's what I'm going to talk about. King Thor, because he was a kick butt drill. <laughs> yeah. So, um, tonight is a slow night when it comes to previews, but that's okay, because I'm here with you wonderful people, and of course, the wonderful folks at InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions and manga up to 50% off loyalty discounts, tack on an extra 2% to that, and if you order $50 or more in your collected editions order, well, you get free shipping. Who doesn't love free shipping? I know I do. So yeah, fantastic customer service, uh, wonderful packaging. When you visit InStockTrades.com, our wonderful, wholesome sponsors. Uh, Lionheart, Gio, I'm excited for the TMNT Batman omnibus that is coming. So yeah, that is actually one of the things I wanted to bring up tonight on this stream is that we got more freaking uh, solicits for... Uh, for omnibus right uh that but i'm gonna look at them real time because i totally did not prepare for this but i'm gonna look for the image that i can share with everybody uh, we did get more solicits yeah um tmnt including this uh tmnt omnibus well i can't find it right now um <laughs> but the series i Think it's going to collect the three-parter with all three parts uh that should be exciting wonderful series <clears throat> shorty larson did you watch invincible yet i've been wanting to i've only seen like the first five minutes of the first episode and something came up and i paused it and i totally forgot <laughs> I, I need to i need to watch that uh sat there's no birthday boy but that means impromptu manga monday with usagi geo Hell freaking yes. I mean, yeah, you know, gotta spread the love of manga, right? 
Jake, thank you for joining. Uh, Aquaman book for a beginner. Aquaman book for a beginner. If you're not going to get the New 52 stuff, uh, uh, Rebirth. The Rebirth stuff, I think it's a, it's great for beginners. Uh, and if you're interested in the New 52, of course. And if you want, if you want to go hardcore uh, with the lore of Atlantis, get the uh, Peter David stuff. It, unfortunately, there's only two trades because they canceled the third one. And uh, yeah, rest in peace that run. But still, you can get those two trades and have fun. Uh, Eric, what's that on your pillow? Uh, just <laughs> random electronics. Literally, my laptop is there, and that's uh, the heck is that? That's my uh, uh, one of my Game Boys. <laughs> um, Fat Jesus, uh, Geo, I got hyped by the announcement for the Tokyo Ghost movie. That is what I'm talking about. That's the type of announcement I want to see because let's face it, we're all accustomed to uh, at this point to Marvel and DC superhero nonsense being adapted to cinemas. That's fine, whatever, yada yada. But you can get kick-ass image books, independent stories into the big screen. Uh, and I'm not talking independent like um, I Kill Giants, which is an excellent series. But the movie was okay at best. Uh, but this is the stuff that I think it's going to uh, get big in the upcoming years. To have these awesome action-packed indie uh, comic books adapted into the big screen, I'm all in for that. Um Oh, did you mean, uh, if you meant the pillow design, yeah, that's a dragonfly. Uh, have you le read Last Roman or Last Ronin? If it's Last Ronin, I, I have not. If it's Last Roman, maybe. <laughs> um, my dude, Eric, I, I do apologize. I'm not a, a huge fan of the character, but I'm going to say... Yes, if I wanted to jump into Ennis' Punisher stuff, where would you recommend starting? Uh, I believe it has a Marvel... Oh, God, what is it called? There's a... Uh, I think it's a select line where it's like uh, beginner starting level entry stories for each character that Marvel picked. And for Punisher, I think that's what they went with. Don't quote me on that, but I would start. I would get started on that. I, I do apologize. I'm just not a huge fan of that character. Uh, Taylor Strickland, thank you so much. Gio, I love your channel. Um, thanks for getting me interested in manga. No problem, man. I'm just here to geek out and, and hopefully entertain people uh, with my uh, nonsense for a couple of minutes. That's my goal. Uh, Farhan, Monstrous would be an awesome indie comic to be adapted to a big screen. Dude, yes, um, Monstrous, Manifest Destiny, um, Bad, uh, I was going to say Bad Science, Black Science. Um, actually, a lot of the Remender stuff is very easy to translate into cinema. But yeah, uh, Black Science, Manifest Destiny are two of my favorite image titles that I wish would get uh, movie treatments. I think they would rock. Um Especially Black Science. Imagine like a Lost in Space, but even weirder with the uh, Omniverse and all that stuff and the crazy visuals and all that. Instead of space, the multiverse. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, chat. <laughs> Welcome back, Frank. Marvel Select. Thank you so much. Oh, I still have this on. Whoop. Um... I did. Did anyone see the big Thundercats news? Yeah, the director from uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is going to tackle Thundercats. I cannot wait to see 80s nerds lose their crap over it and start um, start arguing about every single thing about it. Like, oh, you can't translate that into movies. They're going to ruin it. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, JR, you're a fan of Bronze Age Aquaman. There are a couple of deluxe books at Barnes and Nobles. Yes, all Aquaman is great. I mean, it, it it wasn't until Peter David where he revolutionized the character, but uh, the earlier stuff, Silver, Bronze Age, all that, it's it's really fun. It's not the best material compared to what we've had since the 90s, but I, I dug it. I like it. 
especially uh, Mira. <laughs> Phil, thank you for joining, man. Uh, Gio, about to jump into Helsing Deluxe Volume 2. So far, so good. Man, I mean, I, I wanted to get those Deluxe Editions, but I already own uh, the Helsing Ultimate OVAs, the, the movies, and I, I don't like double dipping. You know, I don't like um, not double dipping because they're different uh, media, but I don't I want to stop getting uh, like I'll buy a manga and then they come up with an anime and <laughs> I, I get easily tempted and, and I buy the anime on Blu-ray. So now I'm stuck with the same thing in two formats. Uh, so I stopped doing that. And since I already own uh, the Helsing stuff, I've already seen it and I've already read the manga. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to collect the deluxe edition. I'm good with the uh, Blu-ray. Uh, Gary Sandberg, why do you like Aquaman? Just wondering. Um, I've always liked the nautical theme and the uh, kingdom aspect of it uh, with Atlantis, lost civilizations, the fact that he can control marine life. I, I love um, uh, sea life and, uh, you know, the ocean and all that stuff. Uh, kind of helps uh, that I live like a mile away from the beach. So the ocean and, and, and the, that setting has always been with me since I was born. So I don't know. It, it appealed to me. That's, I think, why I like it. Plus the fact that Aquaman, he's a man of two worlds. Um, and he's not necessarily loved by both at the same time. I, I kind of relate to that in some strange fashion. Yeah. Namor's awesome. Uh, I just like to joke around on the channel that I don't like him, but uh, of course, I like Namor. I just like Aquaman a little bit better. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could say that. I like Aquaman because I'm, a, because I'm an island person, yeah. Plus the mythology and all that stuff with the Atlantis. Really enjoyed it. Plus, Mira is one of the best female superheroes of all time. Just saying um, does anyone know if there's going to be a collected edition for the Promised Neverland, or do I have to get all the individual volumes? I don't think they're going to... Uh, it might be a while, and I'm talking like years for uh, something like that, because the manga already ended, and we had uh, a wonderful first season, and then we had a terrible second season, which wrapped up the adaptation in a very terrific, uh, horrific, I should say, fashion. It was uh, such a letdown. I think they would have preferred to have adapted that if the story would have continued. And uh, instead, we got a mess of a season that tried to do something but failed completely. And anime is a huge booster for manga. A lot of people are manga elitists. They don't like anime because they can't, I don't know, <laughs> they prefer the original source material. But the reality is that anime is the one that really uh, brings in the big cash and moves all those stories along. You know, it's a symbiotic uh, relationship, anime and manga. And if you have uh, an anime like Promised Neverland Season 2 failing, it's not good for the future of the manga. We're, I think it's, you might see a box set with the small volumes, but I don't think we're going to get deluxe editions. Um doesn't Diamond Distribution own previews? How are we going to know what's coming out now? It uh, So far, everything's normal. I had a easy time getting the uh, lists and stuff and <laughs> the thumbnails ready and all that stuff. So uh, fingers crossed it stays like that. But we're going to get through it. Um, totally agree about Mira. She's great. Yeah. Yep. Gio, how has Master Keaton been reading more and more of Gusau, and it seems he can do no wrong? Master Keaton is a collaborative effort, if I remember correctly. Not everything is written by Urusawa. I might be mistaken on that. Um, I only watched a random episode or two of the anime adaptation, so uh, but it looks really cool, and hopefully one day I can collect the whole thing. Uh, just not right now, because <laughs> space is really limited in my uh, shelf. Uh, Aria, thanks for chatting with us. No problem, man. That's what I'm here for. What originally got you into manga? Anime. Simple as that. I've been watching anime since the mid-90s when the floodgates opened with DBZ, Pokemon, and Sailor Moon, and then I just never stopped from there. Animation is my favorite su uh, subject. 
animation is my favorite genre when it comes to film and television. And I just kept watching. Um, then there was like, what, uh, Gundam and Kenshin, and it just kept snowballing from there. And eventually I learned about manga, and my first manga was, uh, shoot, what was it? Samurai Deeper Kyo at Borders, rest in peace, Borders, back in, I want to say 2003, when um, I went into the local Borders and they had that. And I wanted to, I, I knew what manga was and I wanted to check out something cool. And I looked at the first volume, Samurai, had a little bit of humor and etchy jokes and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, it looks cool. I, I dig it. And I got the first volume, love the story. It's about um, uh, feudal Japan samurai uh, who is his soul is bonded with the ancient with an um, uh, evil samurai. I, I'm forgetting the name right now, and uh, two souls sharing one body, and so the bad guys are looking for him. That kind of you know scenario. It's fun. Gary, I'm not by myself though. I'm with you guys because you guys are awesome. So thank you so much. I had to double take at that comment. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jim Aparo. Yeah. Yeah, that art is fantastic. Hip Hop Happens. Have you seen Dororo, the original or the remake? I watched the remake, uh, the first episode back in 2019, and went back and saw <clears throat> almost all the episodes of the original. Uh, the original is fantastic. It's a classic. Uh, black and white, awesome manga, and manga, <laughs> black and white anime, and uh, the remake is just on a whole nother level. Before the Jujutsu Kaisen craze that all the kids are into, uh, Mappa, they were doing some awesome things, and it, I think it was Dororo that really uh, broke them through the uh, mainstream, and now everybody's obsessed with what they're doing, and uh, yeah, it was just announced today, a couple hours ago, that uh, Sentai Filmworks uh, acquired the rights for uh, the Blu-ray because Amazon has the streaming rights. And Amazon, much like Netflix, uh, likes to hog all their stuff and they won't release physical media. So I was really bummed out. Now I'm excited. I can't wait to collect uh, that series on Blu-ray. How does another fare as a horror story? The first volume has been out of print for a while, but I found a copy at my library. Not necessarily my cup of tea, but it has its fans. Um, it's out of print. And if you can get it, go for it. <clears throat> James, Gio, you and Maddie should do a show talking about Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm open to do a show with anybody, with all my uh, Omnibus Collectors Network uh, buddies. So, hell yeah. <clears throat> I'll look into that. Gio, just watch the movie The Giver. Do you recommend the manga? Not my cup of tea, the movie. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, but the manga looks really cool. So yeah. Um, Jim Apparel's Aquaman was great. Hell yes, it's awesome. Yes. Uh, one man band tonight again. Yeah, uh, Gabe will be joining me shortly. Uh, Jess uh, will be back. Well, not Thursday because we're doing manga. Next uh, Sunday, he'll be back. Uh, but he wishes everybody well. Don't worry about it. He's fine. Uh, let's see. I missed some questions earlier. I do apologize. Um, yeah, Adrian, more DC Omnis. Um, I need to uh, get the uh, solicits, if I can do that, and chat with you guys at the same time. Yeah, I finally found Chainsaw Man Volume 1, and now Volume 2 is out of print. It <laughs> It happens, but it's going to be back. Don't worry about it. I've um, I've been trying to get uh, the Gantz omnibus, and even though Gantz isn't on the same popularity level as uh, Chainsaw Man, uh, that uh, was pretty funny because I am going to uh, get one, and then the other one goes out of print, and then back it goes back and forth. It's kind of irritating, but that's the nature of the beast. Uh, let's see. Oh, yay. Have you read Solo Leveling? Oh, gosh. Um, actually, 
I do have it. <laughs> and I totally, I, I have a little stack here of stuff I hauled and I, I, I don't know where I put the solo leveling book. I do have it. I bought it. I haven't read it yet. It looks amazing. It's a manhwa. I don't even know what the story's about. <laughs> I just read some reviews on it. I saw some people on YouTube hyping it up. I'm like, I'll give it a shot. Why not? It was only like 14, 15 bucks, something like that. It reads uh, like your traditional comic. So if anybody, uh, if you don't want to get into uh, manga because of the switch and format, uh, reading format, don't worry about it. Um, it looks really awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll look for it once I get a co-host here so I don't have to leave the screen for a minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a heavy book, by the way, because it's all in color, fully inked and all that stuff. And uh, it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, Chainsaw Man is going to be reprinted. Yeah, definitely. The, the Once the show starts, the anime, I think it's going to be fall 2021. And part two of the manga starts. Trust me, it's going to explode big time. Any chance of hardcover for Chainsaw Man? I think. Don't quote me on this. I don't know if I'm the only one on YouTube saying this. I think part two has a stronger chance to be collected in hardcover. The reason I say that is because they're moving from uh, the Shonen Jump stuff into the other more mature uh, book from Shonen Jump. I, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, I do apologize for that. Um, so moving from that, um, plus the Magica, he can go uh, crazy with that title. I suspect that we might see hardcover editions in the future, not now, in the future. Thank you for tuning in, though. Uh, what are you picking up this week? Uh, this week, this week. We'll see. Um, I think I'm interested in something, but I can't remember right now. <laughs> uh, Gio, what books in your collection are you most proud of owning? Uh, that's that's easy. And no, it's not Aquaman. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, the Hellboy Library Editions, they're so fantastically built that whenever I look at them, I've, I've read them all. I've, I, I'm, I'm not up to date with BPRD because I haven't read uh, Hell on Earth uh, because I'm waiting for The Devil You Know so I can do a proper uh, continue that uh, storyline. Um, but whenever I look at the Library Editions, I think, man, this... This should be pricier, you know. It looks so awesome, um, and for the price and the and the stories and the care and love that went into creating that world from uh, Mike and his, you know, his world building and art style, it just it looks premium, man. I, I love owning that. Another one is uh, the Invincible uh, Ultimate Collections, the hardcovers. I love those. They're so bright and colorful. Uh, if somebody wants to get uh, from manga into comics, I always recommend uh, Invincible. It's right up there. It's so it's such an easy transition. The other day, somebody was writing on Twitter, like Invincible has no business being this good, the TV show. Now, granted, I haven't been watching the TV show, but I said, you know, if you like that, you're gonna really love the uh, the comic. It's, it's so much fun, especially if you're an anime fan or a manga fan. Uh, so perfect transition, I think. Uh, the other one I'm really proud of is, oh, uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man uh, hardcovers. I love them. That's what got me into collecting. If I hadn't collected those books, I probably wouldn't be here talking with you guys. That made me a fan of not only the Ultimate line and Marvel, uh, just collected editions as a whole, you know? That was a long-winded answer. <laughs> Um, what's your most damaged book? Most damaged book. Ultimate Spider-Man hardcover volume one. I bought it from a used seller on Amazon or eBay a long time ago. One of the pages inside is completely ripped up. Like it looks like a, like if you gave the book to a baby and they just grabbed it at random and tore the page apart. And then the seller stitched it back up with tape and the dust jacket's missing. It's a mess of a book. Uh, that and Thor, uh, the Jason Aaron, the, the first 
um, Thor heart oversized hardcover. Uh, that got damaged with the Hurricanes back in 2017. And since it's out of print, I don't want to toss it away, but it's a mess of a book. I just, I, I have it there as, as a relic. If they make an omnibus or if I'm able to track down a, another copy of the OHC, um, yeah, I'll upgrade. It's, it's yeah, it's pretty bad. <clears throat> Gio, what are, what are the books to look out for tomorrow, bro? I know some have been held back from the previous week. We'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah, we'll get into that. Don't worry. Uh, excited for that Ultimate Spider-Man omnibus. Man, I, I've i read... Um, I haven't done it in a while, but since I got the Ultimate Spider-Man hardcovers, that was back in 2008, I think. I... I got um, I, every year. I would read that series, the twelve hardcovers, and I've I don't know how many times I've read it since then. Uh, I'd love it, and I want to get I want people to get the omnibus so they put out the whole series in omnibus form format. Uh, but I can't get rid of the hardcovers. Uh, too much sentimental value in those uh, in those books. But I am excited for people to get that. Um, Invincible Hands Down is the best non-Big 2 superhero comic for me all, of all time. Yeah, it's it's really awesome. I think it's Kirkman's best work. Uh, Cameron, uh, thank you for helping me to get into more manga. That's awesome, man. Have you read the Transformers manga? I read just a few chapters, and it wasn't for me, unfortunately. I'm not a big Transformers reader. Uh, I don't... Uh, I tried reading the comics, not really for me, um, and the manga as well, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> do you ever double dip? Um, do I ever double dip? Um, I don't try to, but ever since I joined Omnibros back in... Uh, when did I join this channel? Uh, 2016. Um uh, my Omni Bros constantly photo bait me into or um, into getting into double dipping or triple dipping, as Luis is saying. Yeah, I've 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 done that, but now not so much because I've held back a little in the uh, collected uh, game. I'm not getting as many books as before, uh, mostly because I ran out of room, and I don't like double stacking my cubes. My Kalax cubes. I don't like that. Um, I, it looks fine, but to me, it drives my OCD wild. I like that. <clears throat> the good old days of the Ultimate Universe OHCs, it was almost guaranteed then that every one of those collection, collections was in OHC format. I have uh, the Fantastic Four uh, in OHC. I'd love that run. Super underrated, in my honest opinion. Um, X-Men, I never collected. I read it, but I, I didn't want to collect it. Um, I have the Ultimate stuff in trades, and it's just mostly the Spider-Man stuff, which I enjoy. But I love the Ultimate Universe. Uh, Jerry, I think I remember you're an, an Inhumans fan. If so, do you think they need to print some OHC storylines? I found some custom bound, and they're calling my name. Dude, yes. We've only had... Uh, the Charles Soule stuff with Inhuman, Uncanny Inhumans, the Paul Jenkins stuff in oversized hardcover. Uh, did Royals get a hardcover? I don't think they did. But Black Bolt did. And that's about it. Uh, there's a lot more out there, right? Um, especially the, uh, uh, the their, their first series and then the, uh, uh, can't remember the name of it, the Anne Nascenti book that she wrote. Um, I would collect all that stuff in hardcover, for sure. Uh, do you ever show your collection, Jay? I feel like I've never seen it since I started watching Omni Bros. Uh, it's just, um, I, I built a PC that I'm using for streaming and editing and all that stuff, and it doesn't fit next to the shelves, so I, I, I moved it elsewhere in this room. Uh, but back in, uh, let's say, 2000. 2019, you can watch a whole lot of Omnibros where I'm, you, you can see my collection. And in my vid, in my channel, I do have a, um, 
uh, tour of the shelves. I do them every September. <clears throat> what storyline would you adapt for an Inhumans MCU do-over? Uh, what storyline would I adapt? I wouldn't do, I would not do uh, any of the soul stuff. I think it needs to be a separate thing first. And then if it does well, you tie it back in with the universe. Maybe the Jenkins uh, stuff. Because that was pretty, um, that was that was pretty. Uh, I can't find the right word for it, but it was mostly by it was it was doing its own thing. Is what I want to try and get at. And you only had references for like, I think Reed Richards at one point and uh, the world government, and that's it. It was mostly a self-contained storyline. I think that's what you need to do because you know the Inhumans are such a different property from from anything else in the marvel universe uh they're so they're the most alien type of characters in the marvel universe unlike the actual alien species which if you read the different cosmic titles they've interacted with everybody from thor to the avengers to the guardians of the galaxy it it's a universe out there but um the inhumans live in their own bubble you know and uh, that's what i find it fascinating this whole super society uh, underneath our noses. We don't know they exist and they're doing their own thing. You can do like a political drama kingdom type story. I think there's so much that you can do with that, but we got that crappy TV show instead. Um, that Black Bolt 12 issue run was pretty good. I mean, yeah, the artwork was stellar. Um, the story was really good too. It's just unfortunate that that led to uh, the death of the Inhumans uh, story from Donny Cates, and now we have no Inhuman books. <clears throat> ah, Lethal Protector Venom. You get it. You get it. Inhumans should just be Game of Thrones on the moon. Hell yes. Yeah, just do something like that. Uh, Pre-final season of Game of Thrones. Just wanted to clarify. <clears throat> What's your most wanted omnibus from DC and Marvel? From Marvel... From Marvel, I think it would be, I want, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I want the um, Superior Spider-Man stuff on Omnibus format, and obviously an Inhumans Omnibus. And from DC, I would want, uh, from DC, what the heck do I want? Um, let's, let's do... Um, bronze age or silver age aquaman or a peter david aquaman omnibus uh, dcbs canceled my usagi or jimbo sorry i saw that today that's really unfortunate if if uh yeah that sucks <laughs> love the inhumans also together with black widow yep Gotham uh, from DC Hitman by Garth Ennis. I want to read. I want to read that. I've never read it, and uh, everybody's hyping it up. Ooh, yes, I forgot about this. Uh, Gwenpool omnibus. Can you imagine a pink colored omnibus with the bookend pages and the dust jacket and all that stuff? Yeah. You know, funny story. Uh, I got into Gwenpool just because of the art. If Gwenpool would have been drawn by another artist that wasn't the team uh, Gurihiru, I probably would not be a fan. I own the, those series and trades, all the volumes, and I love Gwenpool. She's an amazing character, a super underrated story when it comes to modern Marvel. But um, if it wasn't for the art, I would have never picked up that title. Uh, I remember when they first showed Gwenpool and the concept I remember the first uh, action figure and statue, and they drew her like straight up a female uh, uh, Deadpool. I was really turned off by that. I did not want that at all because I'm not the biggest fan of Deadpool. He's fine in teams and stuff, but solo stuff, I've never liked Deadpool. Um, but when I saw the Gurihito stuff and the anime manga aesthetic and how wacky it is, I gave it a shot and absolutely loved it. Quack, thank you for joining. 
Um, Spectre by Ostrander. That'd be that'd be awesome. Or a Suicide Squad. Omnibus. Yes. I think it's not going to happen because DC is all over the place. But with the new movie and stuff, that would be a pretty good, good idea to get an Omnibus going. Not going to happen. Which manga series would you like to have in a premium format like ha has been done with Berserk, Helsing, Blade of the Immortal? Uh, let's see. You know, um, I think a, it, it's going to be a massive undertaking, but a deluxe format of One Piece would actually be really spectacular. My man, Gabe, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, Gil, man. Thanks for holding down the fort again on this special Monday episode. Yeah. yeah, don't worry about it. I got the wonderful people. Our fans are the best, and uh, I was just happy to talk with them. So you should have just right. put the link to the green room in the chat and see who shows up on Mondays. Just see Sorry. what happens. Just <laughs> pure chaos. Pure chaos. Love it. Uh, but Candace, uh, to finish up that question, uh, one piece I think would be really cool to have in a different format other than the small Tonko Bonds. Uh, and I'm looking around at the stuff I own to your eternity from Kodansha. That would be really awesome in uh, a deluxe format. And uh, maybe one of the uh, like the Gundam Origin stuff. I know we have the hardcover for that, but a little bit bigger, you know. Amp it up. <laughs> I Those think it would beautiful. look really badass. Those Gundam ones. I mean, I'm going to buy it just because they're so cool looking. They're really good. And then, like, the inside art's great, too. Like, the first, like, couple of pages, it's these beautiful watercolor, like, you know, yeah. spacecapes. Or you get, like, really cool mecha stuff, too. Yeah. That's a fun series that anybody can pick up. You don't have to like Gundam. Yeah. You just you want to read a cool space opera with uh, war themes and all that stuff and adolescence in the you know growing in that time period of war uh you're gonna like the gundam origin stuff well me and you i mean i'm i gotta find the rest of the book but you know i've been reading pluto mm, i know yeah. you're 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 a huge fan of pluto do you think oh, what so do you good. think about that being in like a deluxe hardcover format pluto all the odusawa stuff uh that'd be great Pluto especially, I think, could use a different or a newer edition because we only had the uh, signatures, signature-sized books, um, mm -hmm. but a hardcover would be pretty awesome. I know they did. I know Cura has a, the box set, and they were hardcovers, but they're they're smaller size hardcovers. So I wonder because yeah. they have the larger size trades for a Cure. I wonder that how cool it would be to have those larger size style trades, but as a hardcover. You know, have yeah. what, six of those, six of those also. Really what up, Lionheart? I need up, to get uh, the Akira box set. I slept on that, and the uh, Battle of Angel Alita box set. I want that. Um, can you, Gio? Oh, I could do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have control over the board as well. Uh, I wanted to highlight this question real fast, Gabe. I love your CGC FF books. What are the grades? Uh, my FF one's a four, nice, and uh, my 49 or yeah, my 49, 48, 49, the first Silver Surfer, first Galactus, those are both seven or I'm sorry, 8.5s. Awesome, you got you got a, a nice collection, yeah, yeah. I'm, that's, I'm, that's, I was saying that before, I want to get more high end, nice CGC like investment style, like you know, historic books. Oh, I love this comment, by the way. Alex, you're right on the money. What percentage of the people complaining about the Black Widow movie are still going to watch it? Everybody's going to watch it. Everybody. Every comic book fan is going to watch it, even if they hate uh, the character or the movie or that stuff. So, What's what's been the complaints about Black Widow? I don't, I don't know. Maybe the constant uh, shift in dates? or I, I, I don't know. But they, they gave us a date, right? Now that things are starting to, like, like seriously open up a little bit more. We're getting on the verge of all of that. They gave us a, uh, no, no, it may be, well, is it because, are they complaining because it's on Disney Plus and I mean, yeah, at, yeah. at theaters and in Disney Plus you have to pay for it? I'm fine with that. 
the only problem I have with that is that I the only movies I collect are the uh, superhero movies on mm-hmm. Blu-ray. So I, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to see that in theaters. Probably not. So for me to get like $30 to watch that movie and then uh, another 30 to get the 4 Ks, like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the reason I want to do it. Because for me and my wife to go to the theater, it's, you know, it's 15 bucks a ticket, you know, popcorn. Uh, I always buy pop. I used to always buy popcorn at the theater just to support the theater. Um, I worked at the theater a long time, so I know that the only money they really get is from the concession stand. But I still sneak mm-hmm. in my own candy and soda. So I'll oh, buy a popcorn sure. there. Yeah. Um, I'm so happy that you're here because I've been wanting to grab the solicits that we missed, including this. Ooh. So uh, that's perfect. Let me let me grab that solicit while you uh, talk with the chat. <laughs> yeah, cool, man. Uh, what's up with the chat? Yeah, Joe Goose is paying the $30 plus description. Yeah, that's rough. You know, but like I was saying, I'm down for that. I mean, for the cost it takes to go to the theater and stuff like that, I'll pay less to eat my own food or Uber, Uber, or, uh, Uber Eats, you know, whatever food I want to the house and be able to drink and, you know, not have to get a babysitter and all that kind of stuff. I'm in to watch it uh, at home. But I am looking forward to the days where theaters open up again and we get – movies back on on I, I i want fantastic four i don't think we're going to be in this trouble you know when fantastic four comes up i definitely want to see fantastic four on the big screen or the yeah. new matrix film when that comes out on the big screen uh we got a facebook comment so we are everybody if you know we are streaming this through uh of course the youtube channel we're screen we're now streaming this through uh our omni bros Facebook page, so you guys can like us on there and follow us on there. Uh, if if you're more preferred uh, social media uh, format or platform is Facebook, so we're on there. And also, if it's your preferred streaming service, we're also on Twitch. So we are uh, getting our dirty fingers out all over everybody's uh, <laughs> screens. So, uh, but it says, do you guys think that the recent shows have translated? Uh, fans reading the source material, or do you think fans are attached to the book for monetary purposes? No, uh, Avery Evans, thank you for that. Uh, I think that these recent shows are drawing people to read the source material of that particular like storyline or arc or, or whatever. Uh, we saw that recently with WandaVision. Things like House of M uh, sold out super quick, and I think the hardcover was going, or I think it was the trade even was going for like hundred bucks or something outrageous like that. But I don't think, and the same thing with Winter Soldier or Invincible or you know stuff like that. I think people flock to the stories they're familiar with, and they want to see you know that version of it or see how it's different or maybe see what happens next. Uh, but I don't think like something like the Justice League movie or the Avengers movies get people to go out and start buying just random Avengers and Justice League books. I think from what we've seen is if it's if it's something more focused, then they'll buy that mm-hmm. source material. Yeah, I agree. sadly, I agree. Because they were coming out to like the larger fandom of comics. Comic book stores would be one of the most popular outlets in the country or even the world, probably. If those theater people started going to comic book stores, it'd be a, a it'd be a beautiful, beautiful sight. And all the stores would be incredibly wealthy, and the comic book industry would be so strong and so focused, but obviously we're not seeing that. So we know it's not that nobody's going that route at all. I almost got it. Penguin, uh, I, I don't get Penguin. I think I, I, I had it because now I can look for graphic novels and I'm seeing a lot of them, but I'm not Ooh. seeing the ones that I wanted to mention. Uh, I don't understand this website. <sighs> Let me oh. try this instead. Mr. Awesome's got the right idea. If you want to, you know, 
Do it like back in the day when we used to watch uh, uh, pay-per-view and you would have a party at your house and people would chip in and pay for the pay-per-view. Uh, so that's an idea too, make an, in, in, an event, bring invite a bunch of friends and family over to the house. Everybody kind of splits the $30 a little bit and you make it a little bit of a party, you order food. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. I, would, I, I would like theaters to be more of that. There's some possible way to make it where it's more of like a party gathering. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, swing. Here's something that is going to be for you, Jill. Do either of you collect those early translated manga that were put out in traditional comic format? I've been wanting to check some of them out. Maybe you do a big custom Omni. Uh, no, I, I don't. But uh, our buddy Omar has a lot of old school uh, manga when they were first being printed from uh, Viz and all the other companies. They would put them out in like trade paperback size, like comics. Uh, here is the solicit. I don't know if the chat is aware, but we are getting uh, Batman TMNT Omnibus, 9.99, 576 pages. And it's supposed to come out December 28th. Uh, of this year. Wow, that's pretty soon. So, let me yeah. think about it in terms of Omnis. And this collects all three series, right? The first one, one through six, uh, TMNT two, Deluxe Edition, and three. So yeah, every everything of this crossover is collected in that Omnibus. So does that mean they're do you think that means they're no longer going to be making any any more series like these? Like the Batman Ninja Turtle series? Maybe. Since now they got the Omni out. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it was the three series and that's it. I love this cover, though. That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah. The other one uh, that was coming out was... Superman Red and Blue from um, John Ridley, uh, thirty nine ninety nine. That's coming out. It's a hardcover, December twenty eighth. Uh, the Power of Shazam book two, The Worm Turns. That's the Jerry Ordway stuff. Uh, that's a fifty dollar hard uh, hardcover. Hardcover, yeah, in December. And Adam Strange Between Two Worlds Deluxe Edition. Those were the recent additions to the catalog. Uh, Lewis is asking, is the uh, Batman team in T DC or IDW? Uh, I saw on the cover it had both IDW and DC on it. But if I remember correctly, I think the uh, the miniseries were done by IDW, who licensed the Batman property, I think. I think that's how that worked. I think the series is originally. So I think it's being put out by IDW uh, with an agreement from DC, kind of the same way they do the Marvel action stuff where they're basically licensing that stuff. IDW is a big licensing company uh, when it comes down to comics. Uh, so I think they're just doing it that way. Also, I don't know if, I, I'm just, I might be just making this up, but they, IDW doesn't own the license for TMNT. They're licensing that as well. So I don't think they can license that out to another company like DC and have DC mm -hmm. do that, so. Yeah. Oh, I know nothing about that. I might have just made that up. I mean, I did make that up, but I haven't made That's it. about right, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gio, did you talk about any, any reads or anything yet? Uh, no. Um, wait a minute. End man. When were, Gio, when were they printing that manga, that old format? Was that in the late 90s? I don't even, I don't ever recall seeing manga anywhere until about 2001. It was in the 90s. I don't remember the specific date on that, but it was the 90s for sure. Uh, one of the books I hauled here, uh, this is from, let me take this comment off. Uh, this was sent to me from a fan of my channel. Uh, Chase was kind enough to send this my way. This was published by Viz Communications a while ago. You can see here it is the Viz Spectrum Editions, and this is Hotel Harbor View. You can see right there. 
And this is the size of a trade paperback, but it is a manga. Oh, that's cool looking. So, this is a very dark and grim manga about, I don't know what, it's a noir series. I haven't started reading it yet, but the art is really awesome. And uh, this is a very adult book. It's about a private uh, detective investigator thing. I, I'm not too sure, but I'm really excited about it. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find an action shot because there was, oh, there we go. I love this one. Look at the detail on that. Spoilers. I, I don't know if it's a spoiler or not. Uh oh, I haven't read it yet, but yeah, this is an older series, so don't don't get too upset with me. But yeah, Hotel Harbor View. So I should be uh, working on that on a video on this. I'll be reading it soon. So I got that, and I didn't want it to be all manga so i wanted to highlight some of my recent comic books uh of course i had to do it aquaman i filmed a video and i keep screwing this name up because it's echoes of a life lived well but you instinctively want to say of a life well lived so i keep <laughs> i kept saying that in the video i'm like damn it <laughs> but yeah volume this is this is basically volume four of kelly sudaconic's run on aquaman it's done, and of course, DC canceled uh, the Aquaman books. They're no longer, uh, he doesn't have an ongoing comic right now, aside from the Future State stuff that was published. Um, so yeah, I haven't read this yet. I'm really excited to uh, see how uh, she concludes uh, the run, because I really like the first two books. I'm a fan. Hopefully, uh, she does a good job of that. Who's the art by? People are asking. What? Who's the art by for that uh, oh, Aquaman book? Um, my dude, uh, uh, there's a bunch of people here, but it's mostly uh, Robson Rocha, which I think he's Brazilian. I'd be mistaken on that. Let's see. Robson. Oh, this is one of my favorite panels, by the way. Look at that. Spoilers. He's got a daughter now. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, but I really love this. Um, the art is by Rocha, Jordan Clark, Miguel Mendoza. Probably butcher that. Yep. Aquaman 25 was fantastic. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. And I picked this up as well. The TMNT... Speaking of Turtles, the IDW Collection, Volume 12. Uh, I really need to get back to reading this because it's been a while. I'm not up to date with this series at all. But Where'd you leave off? Or like, like what volume? Like Volume 3 or 4. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been collecting the series because they go out of print and people start bugging like, oh, man, this is hard to find or this volume. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get them as they come out. And I forgot to keep going. I love that I recommended this series to Jess, and he's already yeah. way ahead of me. That's always nice. Yeah, that's always nice. That's good. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get back into that too. I, I think I read maybe volume one. So, and I think I have all the hardcovers too. I don't have that one yet, but yeah, cool man. Oh, and I do have another book. Let me, let me go grab that. Give me one quick second. All right, cool. Oh, he disappeared on me. All right, so IDW Ninja Turtles. Thumbs up. Good stuff there. So the chat asked me earlier if I had read Solo Leveling, and I mentioned that I had it, but I didn't want to leave the chat while I went to look for a book. This is a manhwa, which is basically a Korean-style manga, they're called Manwa, and this reads like your traditional comic, you know? Also, this is in full color. Oh, that's different. Yeah. But uh, Manwa was originally published like books, but then they switched over to Webtoons. So they're animated like uh, motion comics over in South Korea, and when you read it, you scroll upwards. 
and you're reading panel by panel like a motion comic. And that's how most of the manhwa are published these days. So there's a Webtoon app where you can read a whole bunch of them. Not this one. They took it out because they want to make some money off of it. But you can get uh, like uh, The God of High School. Um, oh, what's the other one that I like? The Tower of God. Tower of God? Yeah. And Solo Leveling was on there, but they took it out because, of course, they want you to, to buy it. And now you're probably wondering what the heck is solo leveling about i'm gonna pull a jess here and read off the back um based on the hit fantasy novel known as the weakest hunter of all mankind e-rank hunter jinwoo soon con contribution to raids amounts to trying not to get killed unfortunately between his mother's hospital bills his sister's tuition and his own lack of job prospects he has no choice but to continue to put his life on the line so when an opportunity arises for a bigger payout, he takes it only to come face to face with a being whose power outranks anything he's ever seen. With the party leader missing an arm and the only healer a quivering mess, can Jin Wu somehow find uh, find them a way out? So yeah, a lot of um, gaming elements in this where, where you have like RPG elements uh, but this is, from my understanding, a world where it's not like an isekai where characters are thrown into another world where there are gaming elements. This is a world that has that already. Um, so, yeah. Again, so uh, I saw some, some cool recommendations on this, so I'm picking it up and reading it for the first time. I was going to ask, Jill, which since it's in color, yeah, how often, is it, how often do volumes come out or how often do chapters come out? This is the first one, and it came out this month, um, okay, it, or last month. It was a light novel uh, from Webtoon. It was a light novel, which is essentially just like a regular book, and with a few illustrations. And they're doing a uh, manga-style adaptation like this. It's really heavy, but that's because of the colored pages and the, uh, you know, the inks and all that stuff. So, yeah. Looking forward to uh, reading this. Sounds awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, right. uh, how about you? Did you get anything? Did you haul anything? Yeah, yeah. Let me show you what I got real quick. So I start off with. I showed this off a little bit yesterday on the Sunday show. Uh, I got a, a 9.6 CGC Eternals number one. Good old Jack Kirby, uh, awesome nice. Jack Kirby did the art. Uh, the, he did he did the full writing himself. It's all Kirby. Great stuff. Movies coming out, so it's going to kind of mm -hmm. be a uh, nice little spec book to see what's going to happen with that. Um, oh, I got this in the mail from a uh, a buddy of mine, a skill set magazine. Oh, all right, skill set. So it's a the magazine, it's, 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 it seems to be, uh, you know, your kind of a guns and armor magazine. So why am I talking about the guns and armor magazine? Uh, because, let me find this in here real fast. Should have had this kind of marked out for me. But um, that's not it. There you go. So my buddy, our actually has a published article in this book in this oh, magazine nice. 90s comics from hot to not to back on top and it's a really cool article he wrote that got published in this uh, gun and Ar uh, guns and bullets magazine all about 90s comics and cool stuff like that so i'm um, that's really awesome of him he's a longtime customer from uh, my days at torpedo doing the claim sales um, so yeah, that's, that's really cool and awesome for him to send that to me because 90s comics related. Uh, also 90s comics related, I did grab the uh, the Complete Darkness volume one, uh, hardcover. So I had to pick this up from Amazon. I couldn't find it anywhere else. Like, nobody has the hardcover. Uh, the trade paperback version's out there all over the place apparently. But I uh, got this off of Amazon and it arrived absolutely perfect which is such a uh a rarity uh, and i was really worried about getting this dinged up in the mail it seemed it's 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 not a full-size omni i think it's like a 
like an oversized hardcover. Yeah. This thing is dope, though. That spine is awesome, though. Yeah, that's a great spine. Mm -hmm. Love the Sylvester art. Love all. Love everything about the Darkness uh, series. The video games uh, back in the PlayStation Three, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty days. Two games of all things. Darkness got two video games, and they were both awesome. Uh, what else did I get? So one of the local comic book stores, uh, we haven't had a chance to talk about it yet, Gio. Maybe we could speak on it. Uh, Invincible, this, this little new TV show. I don't know if you heard about it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, on uh, this little website called Amazon Prime. Uh, uh, one of the local stores has a uh, promotion for uh, Invincible. Where it's a bunch of really cool freebies they were giving out and stuff like that. So uh, usually if I go to places like that, they were giving out freebies. I went there just to get the freebie stuff. I, I really just showed up because I wanted the Invincible stuff. But I I can't just go in there, you know, this guy's shop that I've been shopping at forever, just grab stuff for free and walk out. So I did pick up some stuff from him. And what I grabbed is volume one for something's killing the children. Nice. Which was, I, for the longest time, Gio, I have not been able to find this thing for the longest time. It's so, a hot book. It seems like it. I am the art in here is really cool. Everybody's been talking about this book. Uh, so I definitely wanted to check that out. So I got that. Uh, I got WYSIWYG. Oh, what's that? This is uh, Ed Piscor. Uh, for those of you guys that know Ed Piscor from, uh, he's the guy that did X Men Grand Design. He got Red Room coming out, Hip Hop Family Tree, the awesome mm. YouTube channel, uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe. Uh, so this is like one of his first works that he did on his own. Uh, he was originally working for, um, uh, dang it, the American Splendor guy. Uh, oh, um, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, he he, worked, he was working with him for a long time, and so this is one of his first works that he did, and it's about a uh, a, a world genius hacker. So it's pretty neat looking. I like the way the, the book is designed. It's designed like an old Apple Apple II computer. Like an Apple II, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even as like the... Uh, oh, look at that. I love that. Yeah, it's pretty cool too. So Even the, It's like an Apple logo right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, it's, it's, it's in that American Spinner. Harvey Picard. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you, everybody. I said Harvey Picard. Uh, so... Pretty cool looking uh, art in it, uh, indie style very much. Uh, still kind of in that Harvey P. Car vein a little bit. So, but I'm really excited to, uh, to dig through this. This is going to be pretty cool. The end papers I need too. It's all computer gizmos, like a circuit board and stuff. Yeah. So that's neat. Whoa, is this uh, Nelson is asking how much is issue one of something is killing the children going for? Because I'm considering selling mine. Lethal Protective Venom. Uh, it was two hundred last I checked. Damn. Yeah, that thing is just going up. Like if you if you need two three hundred bucks or something like that, go for it. But that thing is just continually uh, exploding. Uh, like nine eight CGCs are like like twelve hundred bucks too. Wow. So, yeah. I have that book on my cart at IST for a long time, and I'm like, should I get it? Should I wait for a hardcover? Should I get it? And then they sold out. I'm like, well, I'm not getting it. <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah, I haven't read it yet, simply because I'm waiting to see if Boom. Uh, it's Boom Studios, right? Yeah. Uh, hopefully they'll do a, a hardcover. I can get grab it that way and read it. So I also got a uh, X Men Demon Days. Ooh, let's see that. Uh, nice. The Peach, uh, the Peach Mo Booger cover. The Mo Booger. Mo Booger. The art in it's great too. I mean, it's this is uh, her first. Uh, Peach Momoko's first interior work for comics, and it's it's just like the covers. If you guys love her covers, the artwork mm -hmm. here is all the same thing too. Beautifully watercolor, I, I, all kinds of probably different mixed media in here, but it's every page is a masterpiece. Every Do I need to cool. be up to date with uh, X Men stuff to read that, or can I just pick it up and read it? Uh, you're asking the wrong guy, Gio. Uh, <laughs> I don't know anything about the X Men stuff going on currently. Uh, I picked it up because it's a cool, uh, uh, it's her first work. And uh, yeah. it's Psylocke. I love Psylocke. 
Uh, now, again, I don't know if you got to be caught up with the other X-Men stuff to read this, but somebody told me there's a special appearance of somebody in here. Uh, mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite characters. Uh, so I grabbed Children of the Atom. Got the uh, Berserker foil cover. Oh, that's a cool cover. That's, yeah, that's uh, Brooks, right? That's Mark Brooks. Brooks, yeah. Yep. And this is neat, too. The uh, Ooh, Aliens. This is a David yeah. Finch cover for Aliens. Yeah. I forgot mm -hmm. about it, too, and I saw it on the stands. I was like, oh, man, I need to pick this up. Inside yeah. art's pretty nice. Uh, but, yeah, I was like, I'm going to get that David Finch cover for sure. I saw that they're doing Predator series, too. So yes. Yes. Can't wait they, for the trades for that. Man, I can't wait for the uh, crossovers for them to mm -hmm. do the Alien versus Predator stuff, you know? Arya says he thinks it's self-contained and lethal protector. Demon Daisy is basically an Elseworld. Perfect. I'll, uh, that'll make a great trade paperback. I'll read it. And one last little thing. I got this guy. Yeah. I got the awesome Jack Kirby. This is a uh, Bowen's, uh, Bowen designed bust mm -hmm. of the man himself. Kirby, yeah. they gave him this little stogie yes. on there, too. Nice little stand, so that's awesome. Was that expensive or uh, this is a, a no? Nah, this is a hundred bucks. I haven't seen these things come up on eBay in a long, long, long time. There's a there's a Stan Lee one also, but I don't care. Like it's yeah, like a yeah. it's like a three hundred dollar <laughs> statue. Yeah, this is a hundred bucks. And I was like, hell, a hundred dollars for Kirby? That's a cri that's a crime, and I'm gonna pay hundred dollars for him. Yeah, so he's cool. Long live the king. Yes, sir. So I'm going to put him up on my shelf over here with Fantastic Four where he belongs. And uh, I'm going to try very hard, Jill. I'm going to try very hard <laughs> to not fall into the Bowen Designs bus statue rabbit hole. They do some awesome work. I've been tempted in the past. Man, I have a few. I, I, mean, I used to love Bowen statues. I had a lot. And I think I lost them in moves and I've sold them off and things like that. But I have a couple of the Bowen ones still. And they're, they've I like them better than like some of the current statues. I know the new current statues are are beautiful and realistic looking, but the ones about the what I liked about the Bowens is they look just like the comic book characters in, that came yeah. out the pages, you know. So, and they're cheap, dude. You can get like the Bowen like little statues, the little busts. There's some expensive ones out there, you know. There, there are those outliers that would be like thousand dollar, you know, bust or something like that. But for the most part, you can find them for like fifty bucks, eighty bucks. You know, they're they're very inexpensive. I love the line they did for the Inhumans. Those are really nice. Yeah, all the Inhuman ones are great too. Yeah, they had all of them. They, they, there's even like a, I think there's a Lockjaw one too, and it's just his big old head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the joke's already over, but I'm trying to upload a. Uh, an image, but I can't. Damn it. <laughs> Let's see if I can. Uh, well, whatever. I'll get it working next time. <clears throat> Make Havoc, thank you for joining. What's up, gentlemen? What up? Good old Make Havoc. Taylor talks comics. Thank you for joining. Uh, Luke, Gabe, I'm getting the thick transmet trades. I can't wait to read them all. Spines are awesome and line up well, too. All right, man. Good job grabbing those things. That's, that's my favorite series. Fantastic series. And I was so, I, I say it all the time. I was so surprised that that series got uh, absolute out of nowhere. Like, it was like just the trades, just the trades, just the trades, just the trades. Hey, there was no hardcover. Like, there was no escalation or, or, or progression upward. It was just trades, 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 absolutes. And I was like, wow, amazing. My favorite series, but nobody talks about that. I was really surprised that that got uh, the absolute treatment. Yeah. Uh, as for reads, I haven't, I haven't been reading much. Uh, like I mentioned, getting into mm -hmm. this soon so the leveling um i read mermaid saga uh, i'm working on a video on my channel about that really fun um it's not as scary as i i thought it was gonna be it's more like monster horror which is right up my alley that's my favorite type of horror when you have creatures and all that stuff 
um, mostly episodic, fantastic Takahashi artwork from the 80s. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like the series, didn't really like how it ends, but it's still a fun read nonetheless. You have a lot of fun with it. It's, it's mostly episodic adventures, so... Yeah, I haven't been reading much either. Uh, I did read uh, James Stoko. Ooh, how was it? Oh, it's amazing, dude. Look at the cover of this thing. This is uh, James Stoko's Orphan and the Five Beast. This is going to make a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hardcover. Uh, if they do, it's, it's, it's Dark Horse, and he's, he's done a lot of work with Dark Horse, especially like Aliens and like Godzilla and things like that. Uh, if they put in a nice hardcover, this thing is going to be amazing because it is James Stoko, who is right now like my favorite comic book artist. Love the detail, love the noodling. Uh, this is a story. It's a it's a, it's a kind of like a. Uh, it, it felt like to me, Jill. This felt like it was it was written to be an anime because it has that same kind of like introduction and progression uh, yeah. of characters, where it's like, hey. I'm the oldest, most powerful, you know, uh, uh, kung fu artist in this village on top of this crazy hill. I'm about to die, and I've trained you my whole life to be my replacement. And then you got to be the replacement. And now, at the same time, that there's like a big attack ready to hit the city, kind of thing. So you have to stand up for your first time as a boy, become a man, and and you know, do what you have to do. It felt like that. It's exactly like that, like very anime esque, but. Uh, this is too cool, too too cool. Love the art. I love so his art. I've seen him do some some Marvel stuff, and it just didn't work. Like you know, like his Modok, and he did some weird stuff for Marvel, and it really didn't work out. But his art style when it comes down to like weird things, like orc stain or spaceships or or like food. Like he did a he did a book all about like space food and stuff like that. Yeah, um, called Wonton Soup. Like he does all that stuff great in here. No, oh, let me highlight so. that. Let's see that. Yeah, it looks cool. It looks like um, the wizard, just am. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so that's uh, that's what I read. Uh, oh, this, this guy's awesome. There's a guy in here called Thunder Thighs. <laughs> this is what he looks like. He looks like Zangief, but with like Whoa. extra, extra, extra quads going on. Extra thick. Yeah. And uh, this part, he's riding in on his horse, and he just uses his thick, massive legs to just split the horse in half. Damn. Because. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. That, like cool. you said, that's going to make a great collected edition. Yeah, that's going to be fantastic. Uh, you want to do uh, previews? Yeah, let's do previews. Uh, but it's also at the same time, because today is a special day, right? Today is the uh, IST gift card, uh, $50 uh, credit. To IST, that's the big drawing we're going to do today. We will do it after previews, but right to... now, <laughs> but right now is the time where you guys will need to send us an email, uh, omnibroslive at gmail.com, uh, just with your name and the email address that's on your instocktrades.com, uh, whoops, on your account. Uh, we will do a, a random number generator and then pick that number email in our email accounts. That's how we're going to choose who wins. And we'll let IST know, and then we'll give you a awesome $50 credit. It's available to everybody yep. all around the world. Uh, so, yeah, everybody join in, and good luck. Send us an email, omnibroslive at gmail.com. Uh, subject line should be... Uh, I don't know. Uh, Subject line should be uh, pineapple pizza. Pineapple pizza. Pineapple yeah. pizza. Only pineapple pizza emails are going to be. <laughs> yeah, those the are the ones that will be counted. Like if you say like pineapple pizza is gross, then I'm going to delete your email. And if it's not uh, pineapple pizza, then we just will ignore it. Yeah. So pineapple pizza in the subject line. 
So you have until now and no repeats. Uh, we're going to look at the, I'll look at the, we'll look at the email. And then once we're done with previews, we'll pick the number. I have a number generator here so everybody can see it and all that stuff. Cool. All right. So good luck, everybody. Yep. I hope I'm I gonna leave the email there for the, uh, for the previews, I think. Yeah. Might as well. Let everybody get a chance. All righty. All right. Let's do this. Preview, preview. Make sure I got it up and ready to go. Not a whole lot coming out, but still some cool stuff. I haven't looked at it yet today. I've yeah, but busy buying comic books at work instead of actually doing work <laughs> or looking at previews for the show. All right, let's do this. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and let's take a look, everybody. Uh, again, uh, InStockTrades.com, the wonderful sponsors of our show. Uh, you'll find these books updated on their website uh, tomorrow, 12 noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. And uh, like I said, I haven't seen this yet, and Gio said it's not that big of a week. So let's see what we got in store today. Image Comics has Philadelphia. Trade Paperback Volume 2. Dark Horse. We were just talking a little bit about Dark Horse. Uh, we got Autobiographics. Uh, Bandet. Uh, Trade Paperback Volume 2. Steelers Keepers. Mm -hmm. The Black Ghost Trade Paperback. Disney Princesses Beyond the Extraordinary. Shock? Wow, you're right, Jill. There isn't anything coming out. Wow. <laughs> this feels like we're looking at the bottom half of previews. Easy. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> then we got a Shock uh, Adult Crime Stories Illustrated hardcover. That looks cool. Uh, Stranger Things, Trade Paperback Volume 4, Science Camp, Unfinished Business hardcover. And uh, uh oh, this might trigger some people. Uh, Usagi oh, Jimbo limited edition hardcover, volume nine, uh, the hardcover and the trade paperback. A uh, lot of people, a little sore over the uh, the new volume one that came out. Uh, IDW this week we got Corgi uh, graphic novel volume five of five. Uh, here you go. Here's the team up that is like when I used to play uh, with my little sister and I had my Transformers beat up all of her My Little Ponies. We now have Transformers My Little Pony uh, Friendship in Disguise trade paperback. That's a good one. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Love Sonic the Hedgehog. This is, this is one of the hidden gems that nobody really talks about. Uh, so Sonic mm -hmm. the Hedgehog, uh, Trade Paperback Volume 8. I can't wait for that hardcover to come out. Uh, but this is a great fun series. Really well written, written, just enjoyable, good stuff that, you know, yeah, you can read and give to your, your kid. Good stuff. Uh, Transformers IDW Collection Volume 2. Oh, that's a new printing, huh? Very cool. Uh, Marvel Comics... We got Avengers Academy Trade Paperback Volume 3. Oh, is this Avengers Academy? Avengers Academy? Let me take a look at this real quick. Yeah, this is Crystal's Gage stuff. Man, I love this series. This series was so good. Uh, I had all the single issues, and I was loving the book. And I, uh, just like anything I, I, I seem to love when it comes down to uh, like the big two books, it got caught up, especially Marvel. It got caught up in a big event. It got caught up in fear itself, and I just completely lost interest in the book after that yeah. part. Yep. Man, that sucks. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Trade Paperback Volume 3 Complete Collection. I'm going to have to look into these. That's awesome. That thing deserves an omnibus or hardcover. That'd be cool. Yep. Uh, speaking of something that should be a uh, omnibus, it should be, at least be reprinted, Avengers by Hickman Complete Collection. Mm -hmm. uh, Fantastic Four Antithesis and Antithesis. Uh, yeah, I think you got it. <laughs> uh, this is the Treasury Edition. This is the Mark Wade, uh, Mike Raringo art, Neil Adams art as well. Treasury Edition, huh? That's kind of cool. Uh, 
Oh man, this is gonna be cool. It's not. I, I haven't read this. I don't know about the uh, antithesis one through four. Um, but Fantastic Four sixty. Yeah, that's a, that's a great book. Yeah, yep. that's a great book. The nineteen from the ninety eight series. Yeah. Uh, Shang Chi, uh, volume one. And then we also got Shang Chi, Trey Perbeck, uh Earth's Mightiest. Yeah, that one's like a greatest hits uh, book. Wow, it's like there's like a Shang Chi movie that was supposed to come out this time or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> uh, Boom Studios, uh, Gunner Craig Court, Trey Perbeck, Volume Seven. That's no it. idea what that is. Yeah. And then down here is the manga stuff, the the really super indie off brand stuff too. Yeah. You know. We'll scroll through here and see what kind of fun stuff we see. Is uh is this Thursday going to be Manga Bros? Yeah, yeah. This Thursday we're gonna probably go over some solicits and talk about some other stuff as well. So cool. We'll go over all that stuff that you're seeing there. Yeah. Most of it it's manga. Yeah, Carol and Tuesday, that's a great one. How about to Don't Toy With Me? Me, Miss Nagatoro. Uh, it's a comedy series. Uh, she's sort of like a bully uh, where she likes to tease a particular male student, and it's played uh, for laughs mostly. It's getting an anime soon. I I've never read it, but I'm going to watch the show to see uh, if it's actually funny or not. Uh Yeah, not not a whole lot. Yep. Oh, Heaven's Design Team. That's a fun one. I do recommend that. <laughs> what is it? Heaven's Design Team. Uh, little. Uh, oh, I see it now. There it is. Yeah. It's basically a dinosaur about, on the cover. <laughs> yeah, it's the design team that God hires uh, to help create the animals of the world, of Earth. It's oh, really so these cool. are the ones you want to be like, what the hell is a duckbill platypus? Yeah. How did you come up with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They recently got an anime, and it's really fun and wholesome. I do recommend that. It is a lot of manga back here. Yeah, it's mostly manga. This stuff is awesome for anybody who's a back issue comic books fan. Uh, Marvel Comics in the, in the 1970s. All these two Marvel publishing books are amazing. Uh, I think I have the one for 1960s and 1980s. I don't know why I skipped the 70s. Um, but it's really cool interviews, retrospectives of, of that decade. You know, what made it popular. This is the start of the Bronze Age stuff. So there's some got to be some really good stuff in here. They got some Roy Thomas interviews, it looks like. So these things are incredible. I wish they would do one for the 90s. But these are incredible stuff. Good resource material. Like, you don't know the history of comics in the industry. Anything by tomorrow is always a good pick. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to check out these phantom like card covers. These newspaper strips. Classics. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I, I don't know much about the Phantom, but I, I, I I'm really drawn to his character though. I like I love his his backstory, the idea of it being like a like a inherited uh you know title. Really kind of just very interesting. And I love the movie, uh the cartoon series, the Phantom twenty 2024 2029 2040 phantom 2040 is what it was it was done by the guy that did uh or the company that did the aeon flux so it's like that really cool art design i always had a thing for something with the phantom i just never read any of the material though it's that pulpy goodness <laughs> maybe maybe because he has a ring on his finger and he punches you in the face and it leaves a Probably. indentation that's always cool <laughs> That time I was reincarnated, Slime Monster. That's one of the spinoffs. Uh, it has like three different spinoffs. I haven't read that one, so I, I don't know. Here's something I probably shouldn't open up, but that was an interesting cover. 
<laughs> what the heck is that? What's the name of that one? Serpieri Eros. Serpieri Eros. Serpieri Eros, number one. All right. Interesting. Not something you see every day. Yep. This lady with her bullshit Fanny gauntlet. I don't like you. <laughs> That's terrible looking. Wonder none. My, oh, God. This no. look, see, this look how terrible it is. Let's just really get this up close. Yeah, that's garbage. Oh. What am I looking at? A warrior? Uh, I mean, it could be, I don't know. Now a this... Netflix original series? What? <laughs> is Netflix just buying everything? <laughs> well, maybe the joke's on me, and this becomes like an, something amazing and incredible that everybody loves. I don't know. That looks kind of wacky, but yeah, if she's fighting off demons with that, good luck. That's awesome. Interesting. Yeah. All right, that is that. You got the uh, the lunar stuff. Yeah, I got you. I hope they do. I hope when like Penguin Random House takes over, that it doesn't become like a weird thing where we can't get it, like these yeah. previews and stuff. Also, is Warrior Nun Dora Dora the Explorer grown up? Maybe. Um, so this is the stuff from Lunar. We got the DC stuff coming out. Uh, we've got Batman's Grave, the complete collection, which is Warren Ellis and uh, Brian Hitch. Oh, this series. I'm going to check it out. The Batman's Grave 1 through 12, the whole thing in one go. I haven't heard anything about it, and I'm surprised because, I yeah. mean, Warren Ellis is usually you hear more about his writing, but. Uh, let's see. Those are comics. Oh, sorry, comics. We got this thing, which is uh, 80 Years of the Emerald Archer, Green Arrow Deluxe Edition, basically a uh, Greatest Hits book. They love doing these Greatest Hits books as opposed to giving these people, like, actual omnibuses of their storylines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, we say we we know Green Lantern is boring or Green Arrow is boring. Here's the five good books we put out of them. Yeah, basically. Uh, this one a lot of people are excited about. Unfortunately, it's the final volume. It is uh, John Constantine Hellblazer Volume 2, the best version of you from Simon Spurrier. Uh, the series is canceled and they allowed him to come back and finish off the what we got with the 12 issues, I think. Uh, but that's the last one. Uh, we also have Justice League Odyssey Volume 4, Last Stand, collecting 19 through 25. I've only read the first trade paperback of this, and it's a lot of fun. I want to come back to it. It's a really fun team. Oh, Dan Abbott wrote that. That's cool. Yeah. And what else do we got? Teen Titans Raven, the hardcover edition. I thought this was already out. Maybe it's a reprint. Uh, I don't know if it came out as a hardcover, though. Mm, might have been like a soft digest size hardcover. I think uh, so, right? yeah. That's about it, yeah, right? Uh, Justice League, uh, Raven, uh, Constantine, and Batman's Grave. That's it. All right. All right, cool. So you ready to get ready to yep. get pick a winner? How many emails did we get? Uh, three thousand. Oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, a lot. Let me see. Uh, that one's getting deleted. That one's getting deleted. That one's getting deleted. Doesn't say pineapple pizza. I have the number generator here, so uh, minimum should be one and max how many emails that we get. Let me see. I got to do some math. By the way, this is courtesy of our sponsor, InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions and manga up to 50% uh, off. Loyalty discounts tack on an extra 2% to that. 
And if you order $50 or more in your collected editions, you get free shipping. Fantastic customer service, wonderful packaging at InStockTrades.com. We got 90 emails. 90. All right. That's the max number right there. 90. All right. So I'm going to hit generate now. It's not this number, so don't get confused, chat, or people watching later. Uh, we're ready? Let's do it. All right. And the lucky number is 69. <laughs> <laughs> So now, nine, dude. <laughs> totally righteous. Now, let's see who won. All right. Uh, how are we going to do this? Because Jesse usually, just, usually does it. Let's see. <laughs> oh, man. By the way, uh, whoever wins this, uh, you have to send <clears throat> an email with your with the tagline uh, IST giveaway uh, winner and the email that you use to log into in stock trades.com and we will fast forward that information to uh one of the guys i think it's omar i'm not too sure and they'll pass that info along to the folks at ist and we'll get you hooked up so give it give it some time uh but we'll hook you up all right so the lucky winner is Trent Schultz. Ooh. Trent Schultz. Congratulations to you. Congrats. So, yeah, like Gio was saying, send us another email. Uh, just to double check to make sure that we have your right email address for your account. And then we'll forward that off to uh, IST. 69 is always lucky. Is the winner still here? I don't know. Oh, yeah, he is. There he is. Whoa, my man, Trent. Thank yo, you so yo. much for participating and winning. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Yeah, so send us that email. And we'll get that forwarded off. we get you your $50 credit. Yeah. That, of course, Chad, is courtesy of the wonderful folks at InStockTrades.com for making it possible. Get yourself some cool books, man. He is 69. And, all right. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, man. <clears throat> man, I mean, you can always participate next time for the Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. We do this every month. So good luck. We do this time. every month. Uh, but yeah, congratulations. So unfortunately, that's about it for me. It's already a little bit too late for me. All um, right. Thank you, everybody in the chat for participating. Another wonderful installment of Omni Bros Live on a Monday. Hauls, previews, reads, all that fun stuff. Uh, thank you to the chat. You guys are awesome. Thank you for all the questions, all the wonderful feedback and comments. You guys are the best. As for me, you can find me uh, on my channel, A Week in Geekdom, where I talk about anime, comics, and manga. Doing reviews on that stuff is a lot of fun. And if you guys uh, want to see more of that, head on over to my channel. A week in geekdom. How about yourself, man? All right, everybody. You guys can follow me here on YouTube. Gabe loves '90s comics as well. You can hit me up on the good old Instagrams. Gabe loves '90s comics as well. So, I think that's it for us, everybody. Again, uh, thanks for showing up. Congratulations to Trent. Uh, it's a light week, so you can save that fifty bucks for next time. Our right, next uh, good old Om Omni Geddon strikes. Uh, but till then, everybody, thank you so very much. We'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. There it is. <laughs>